So uh, is all this under Mirage and then looming is under Mirage or, or what, what, what are the uh, semantics of, of looming versus Mirage? Okay, well, um, th that's all, uh, I guess that's all in the, in the details of the, uh, of the terminology. Um, and uh, from what I understand, technically, I think Mirage has to have an inverted image uh, whereas uh, there are other atmospheric effects such as looming or towering that are purely displacement and, and you don't necessarily have to have to have an inverted image in order for uh, refractive effects to occur in the uh, in the atmosphere. So they would all fall under the category of atmospheric refraction. I guess that, that's that would be a good uh, a good thing to say yes. Okay so again this is their graphic. We you know, according to them, we know the Earth's a ball, so therefore this is the way it's working. Chicago is over here on the left. We got the curve of the Earth here, and the light rays, which would normally be going straight across, uh, have to be bent due to the atmospheric lensing, the uh, density of the atmosphere, and whatnot, causing the light to refract downward. Basically, just conveniently enough over the top of the bulge of the of the curve, so that we can see it on the other side. Now, here's where I would differ with this whole idea. Again, just sort of flipping the board. Let's just say we don't start with any preconceived notions of the Earth as a globe. Let's entertain for a moment the completely absurd notion that water is flat and it always seeks its own level. And we're looking across a flat plain of water, 46 miles across, check this image out right here. Now I caught this image shortly after Rick and I returned from our trip across the lake. Uh, we grabbed a bite to eat and then we went out to the beach and it was still clear out so we got the camera out and looked 46 miles across the lake to see this right here. This image is extraordinary. Okay, The boat right here I'm gonna guess is less than a mile away. And I base that because these people walking in front of the camera here are walking across some rocks that sort of jut out and, and kind of fence in the um, harbor area. And they are uh, only about a quarter of a mile away from where we were when I shot this. I shot this image from right about here. This is where we were uh, looking across, and this is the area right here where those people were walking and the boat as you could tell uh, by the size of the people on the boat wasn't too much further beyond that so maybe a half mile to a mile or at the most I would say away from where we were. All right now when I was headed back to Chicago to catch my flight I snapped this picture of the Willis Tower and this is if you go on Google Earth uh, this is right about the area right here where I believe I, I was when I took that picture. Looking across, it's only about 0.6 of a mile. So I'm just a little over a half mile away, and look at the size of the tower as compared to the car that was diagonally in front of me. We were looking at the Willis Tower from this direction right here when we were on the other side of the lake. Now... Okay, so let me slide the car over and shrink it down to the appropriate scale beside the boat. Do you see something rather interesting here? This building is significantly magnified. The image on the left shows the size and scale of the building next to a car at 0.6 of a mile away. The image on the right shows the same building and the same car with a boat at 46 miles away. The atmosphere really is acting like a lens. What type of lens? A convex lens or a magnifying glass. So I'm going to suggest this is what's happening. The atmosphere is acting like a lens, which magnifies the city, brings it up a little closer, and as it does so, we start to lose a little bit of the bottom of the buildings and perhaps due to uh, the density in the atmosphere there's an additional refraction in, that takes place that makes it drop down even more. Is that what happened? Let's look at it from another angle here from the side view. I'll bring our graphic back in of refraction. Let's go ahead and orient the graphic so it better represents what we're looking at here. 
I'll angle the light rays to show the density of the air here causing the refraction and bring our lens in so we can magnify the city. It brings the city up, brings the city up, and as it does so, we start to lose a little bit of the bottom of the city, and perhaps either due to the magnification or due to additional refraction, maybe it is dropped down a little bit more, and uh, this is what we end up with. Huh. Just like we saw. Now this is a still frame from the half hour video that I did and uh, the numbers you see there are all based on the numbers that Tony was giving me based on his device. Uh, his device said it was 37 nautical miles which is 42.6 statute miles but when you plot the same exact location that we were at the exact distance you get on Google Earth is uh, 46 miles so you basically add about four miles to all the numbers that you saw in the half hour video. But here's where it gets interesting, at least to me. Both of these pictures were taken with the same camera. Now, if you remember from the half hour Chicago skyline video, I was saying, I can, I can see Chicago, we're about 42 miles away. I can see it. The problem is trying to get the, the camera's having trouble focusing on it because it's moving up and down and it's so zoomed in. But I can totally see it. Rick was not zoomed all the way in. He was using my camera, the Nikon Coolpix P900, but he was only zoomed in about halfway when he grabbed the shot above. Now I know that when I got the image below, I was zoomed all the way in. And so some people may point to one of my videos where I was actually debunking myself. If you remember that uh, NASA video showing the uh, the Earth and the Moon and uh, the moon was going in front of the earth. So I did a little experiment where I used a baseball as a moon and a larger ball as the earth. And I got at the end of a long hallway with my Canon 70D and uh, zoom lens and zoomed all the way in on it. And uh, this was the image that I captured uh, doing this experiment. There's the NASA image on top and there's my image. And so, you know, just by virtue of uh, the lens, it it does magnify the distant object to make it look proportionately large to the object that is uh, closer to you. So is that what's happening here? Well, uh, both these images were shot from the harbor area here. The red line at the top is where we were in the boat. We're just about to depart when I asked uh, Tony to stop and I got the camera out to shoot Chicago. And the uh, lower red line is where we were on the beach when I took the picture on the bottom there. So and the distance between those two locations is less than a quarter of a mile. So it's, it's negligible. We're still looking about 46 miles across either way. Now, here's the shot uh, from the beach before I zoomed in. Now I'm zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, and I'm going to stop it right about here. That's about halfway on the zoom, and I believe that's where Rick had the camera set when he took the picture above, based on the size of the building right here. I'm going to guess that he was about halfway. All right, so let's go ahead and continue the zoom. And this is zoomed all the way in. The Nikon Coolpix P900 has an 83 power optical zoom, and that little punch in after that was the digital zoom afterward. Uh, it has a digital zoom that goes beyond the 83 power. I did not go all the way in with that. I just punched it a little bit uh, because I wanted to frame it with the ship right there. So that's 83 power plus. So I'm going to guess it's probably the equivalent of about maybe 90. 90 power zoom or so right here. Now let's bring the picture in from the halfway zoom and I'm going to go ahead and bring our car back in and slide the picture in from Chicago and I'm going to scale the car to the appropriate size to the boat right here and go ahead and slide the car over to the building. So this is what the car in the building look like at half zoom. So let's try something else here. I'm going to unfreeze the video and back it off so it goes backwards and we're zooming out back to the shoreline and now I'm going to bring it forward again and let's see right about here is where we have some fairly decent resolution where you can still make out the building I'm going to zoom in here with the computer this is a computer zoom right now on this still image 
and I'm going to bring the other image in from the half zoom and scale the car over to uh, the digitally zoomed in image of the almost completely zoomed out shot and uh, so you got three different zooms here one almost completely zoomed out one zoomed about halfway on an 83 power optical zoom lens and uh, the one on the right of course all the way zoomed in uh, with a little touch of digital zoom on top of that in the camera and when looking at these images compared to the one on the left which is just shot with my iPhone I, I'm, I gotta tell you it looks like it's being magnified to me especially when you consider the fact that that building is like 45 miles away from that boat it's 45 miles away so <laughs> Looks like there's some serious magnification going on here. And, you know, some of that could be due to the lens. I'll give you that. But I also know what I could see with my own eyes. Now, I understand you may not want to take my word for it, so all I could say is go up there and do it yourself. <laughs> but uh, based on my, what I saw with my own eyes, as well as what the quote-unquote experts had to say regarding how the atmosphere can act like a magnifying glass, I'm still going to go with it as being magnified. Again, you can go out there and test it for yourself. But remember, let's just go back and hear from the experts once again about what they say is happening. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, just maybe you can, now you can just see the top of, uh, of the Sears Tower. And if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place, hopefully now you can see all of Pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings. including including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes, 